So, um, my talk today is Mindful Action. That's why I like that song so much. Thank you both. So this morning I'm going to tell you a story about me. And because mindful action, especially with what's taking place today in our world, years ago, most of you don't know this, but some of you do, years ago I was married to a police officer. And at that time was also during the Berkeley riots. And we lived in Albany, and he was a policeman in Albany. And so there was a lot of upheaval going on at that time. And there are some very good policemen, and there are some not so good policemen. And the very good ones totally outweigh the not so good ones. And at that time, Police could not stand up for themselves. They were, they were blocked from saying anything or bringing any information out to the community that wasn't working for their highest and greatest good. And so I'm a young mother in Albany, and my husband's a policeman, and the city council wanted to take Social Security away from them. And the policemen did not want that, and they, they you know, petitioned the, the city council to say, please don't do that. And the city council said, no, that's what we're going to do. Which to me was so unjust. And I said to my husband, well, why don't you say something? Well, we're not allowed to, he said. And I said, hmm, hmm. Oh, you're not allowed to, but I can. And so mindful action, and that's why I bring this up, because I didn't do it in anger. I didn't do it in making somebody wrong. I just did it to make it right. That's the difference. That's what we need to do. What will make it right? So I was really cute then too. And so I put one of my best outfits on. It was a Pendleton skirt and a red sweater. And I went to the city council meeting. The policemen were there. But then they started saying that this is what they were going to do, and I raised my hand. Of course, it was, at that time, all men. And this cute little blonde gets up, she raised her hand. And the men all just smiled. And I said, I got up, and I said, I am one of the police officer's wives. And I disagree with what you're doing. And I want to make that really clear. And I said, I know that they can't say anything. But there's nothing to stop me from saying something. And with that, their smiles started to fade. <laughs> and I said, I will march around City Hall. And I will do so to bring to the attention the citizens of Albany. Now, can you imagine? Here she is. The citizens of Albany, what you're planning to do so the citizens can decide if this is a proper thing for their police in Albany. They didn't like that. And I said, but they were like, oh, this, you know, we can dismiss her. And I said, but I need to tell you that before I go and, and march around City Hall, I will call all the mothers of the police officers. We all have young children, you know, and so we'll bring our children in baby buggies and strollers. But before I do that, I will call the news of the Bay Area, I will call every news media, and I will let them know what I really think is an improper thing for you to request of these police officers. Just letting you know. And with that, I sat down. And of course, after the meeting was over, all of the news people came up and, and the uh, city council kind of tabled their idea, or they, they said, put it off to the next meeting, and uh, all the newspapers came and said, well, when are you going to do it? When are you? I said, as soon as they make a decision, I will let you know. But I will call you first. And they said, please. So then the next day in the San Francisco Chronicle and the Berkeley Gazette was Maggie Buck, you know, stops the city council of Albany. So I'm talking about this because it's mindful action. What is it yours to do? Not against, but for truth. So my mother called me the next day and she said, I am so embarrassed. What will my friend 
one second. I said, Mom, they won't say anything. I, I don't have the same last name as you do. So just don't talk about it. <laughs> anyway, that's something you didn't know about me. There are many other stories, but that's one, and I think it's, it's really appropriate to today. Because we're asking, what is mindful action? It might be writing letters. It might be being nice when we go out to the grocery store or, or we, we're helping neighbors. We're making a difference. See, I'm old enough and I've lived long enough to understand change doesn't take place until good people see and hear the mistreatment and the injustice of others and we speak up. Change can't take place when we're against anyone or when we're angry. Trust me on that. It doesn't work. We just want to stay in our truth. Change takes place when we work together to find a better way. I don't think any of us can look at the news and what's taking place in our world today and, and not have our heart cracked open. It's in these big events. When these big events take place, they wake us up. I don't know about you, but I am awake. So we step up and we come together for the good of all. As I've said before in this community, we're not in this place for politics or taking sides. That's not who we are. However, this is a place of raising our consciousness. This is a, a place that asks us to be conscious of what we believe. And be conscious of a vision of a world that works for everyone, not just a few. I will not tell you how to think or what to think about today's events. That's not my job. I am going to ask you to live your life from positive spirituality, not against, but for. Let us each ask ourselves, what am I for? Oh, by the way, the city council dismissed their idea of taking their social security away, I did not have to march around the city hall. It works if you work it. Does what you, what you are for today, does it lift your heart, does it lift your soul? That's a question we must each ask ourselves. If not, Pray on it and pray for a world that you wish to see and pray for a world that you wish to live in. The practice of positive spirituality is not easy. Because I don't know about you, but there are times we want to shame and blame, don't we? But then we have to call ourselves back to positive spirituality. Because that's where things change. When we say this isn't okay, which is what I said to the, the, the board. It isn't okay to do that. They don't want it. And yet, it is rich and very beneficial when we greet each day from positive spirituality. It lets us burn bridges of blaming and finger pointing and helps each of us to declare a right way, a way that blesses our soul and the soul of those around us. What does that look like to you? I'm responsible for my wellness and my happiness. Hear that again. I am responsible for my happiness and my wellness. You are too. Being responsible for our own happiness takes away the burden of believing it's someone else's job to make us happy. It's your job. It's my job. 
to find that sacred and holy place within us that fills us, that lifts us, that says, you too are my beloved in whom I'm well pleased, no matter what you do or you don't do. I like the phrase, the buck stops here, because that means I have to be responsible. The buck stops with me for my success and my happiness. In case you're new, I'm Maggie Buck. You know, my maiden name used to be Rudolph. I went from one deer to the other. <laughs> it's all good, it's all God. And my God is my good. Your God is your good. And that's why it's so important that we cultivate our spiritual practice, that we cultivate who we are and who God is in us. See, positive spirituality stands on principle, not on ego. It is the realization that in the short run, things look contrary to the way we want them to be. And in the long run, we know everything will work out. That when there's this, this awakening in consciousness to a mass of people, things change. And we recognize that with God, all things are possible. So what is it that you desire to have be possible that will lift you up? Because people of faith trust in a greater power, in that greater power at work in everything, in all things at all times. Yeah, we have COVID-19. But I am absolutely trusting and knowing that every laboratory technician and brilliant person is at work for a vaccine? Is at work for medication that will lessen the effect of this? The other day I saw how polio has been totally eliminated. But I remember as a child, we did not know how you caught it. And my parents were scared that their children would catch it. Because we knew other people who did. Creating a better world for all means we create the vision that God it can fill up for us. Because you see, when we create the bowl, and within it has the vision of what we desire, then we give God a product that can, God can fill and create and bring to us, reveal to us a greater truth. This is our job. This is our mindful action. We live in a, in a spiritual universe and our, our lives are God's goodness and God's guidance. And this is really important for us to remember, especially when we watch the news that Jeff talked about. Hey, and when it gets too full, we go out and build the garden and plant the seeds of something greater yet to be. God's goodness and guidance and support, we are never alone. I think this is one of the most important things for you today to remember. You're not alone. Wherever you are, God is, has to be. Transformation takes place first within each and every one of us as we each visualize that greater good that we each place in the bowl of, of vision what it is we desire to take place for the good of all and the harm of none. Because you see, when we can rise up in the power and the love and the presence of God, we can only see good for everyone. Let us each become a living testimony of God's goodness in our lives. Oh yeah. I know that we go out to the grocery store, especially up here, and, and half of us wear masks and other people don't. Bless them. Bless yourself. Don't spend your time making someone wrong. Just be right. Right in you. 
I'm blessed then because, you see, each life is a gift. Your life is a gift. It's your choice to claim your partnership. To claim your partnership with the Christ consciousness. That life that lives within you today. It's your choice to claim the Christ consciousness in you today. Everybody breathe into that. Everybody take a moment, just breathe. This is a time definitely in our life that we need to keep breathing. And I've, in that breath, I'm gonna tell you, did you know that there is a fish called the Moses soul? And this fish lives only in the Red Sea and it's very small. But in the Red Sea, there's lots of sharks. And you would think that this little fish would be really good shark bait, but it has a secret. The shark sees the, the, um, the Moses soul, and it opens its mouth, and the little fish swims in, and all of a sudden, the fish realizes, I'm in the mouth of a shark. <coughs> Whoa! And with that, the Moses soul lets go with this poison that causes the shark's jaw to freeze. Like that. So it can just swim away. So no shark gets to taste of a Moses soul because it has this ability to freeze the shark's jaw. See, I believe that the Moses soul is very special and is filled up with faith and trust in the God that created it. Must be really special. Do you see? When we're filled up with our own trust and our own faith in God and the vision of safety, we will not be victimized by events or sharks. Our faith is our shield. Our faith is what keeps us safe. Instead, we will be lifted up in our vision of the greater good being birthed. Do that. Are you willing to allow that? See, optim optimism is calling each and every one of us. Neuroscience research indicates that when we are optimistic about life and events, when we trust greater good to unfold, the very frontal lobe of our brain lights up like a small city. And when it lights up, when, when, when we have that ability to be optimistic, to know that something greater is taking place, this lights up. So just imagine, here's my brain lighting up. And it sends messages to the, the thymus, the thymus gland, which builds emotional contentment and safety in us. See, we are made to work together, all our parts. So when we have optimistic ideas and visions of the greater good evolving out in in life, it fills us up with light and lights up. And we are lifted up in that. So we want to be optimistic about what's taking place. Possibilities greater than what we are seeing creates a powerful energy that heals. This is the truth. I've done it in my own life. I created a life beyond my wildest dreams because things were pretty difficult for me early on. And when I di divorced my husband and I had two young children, I kept visualizing that I could have a life beyond my wildest dreams, that I would be free to raise my children and free to still do the studies that I love to do. Who knew? That would lead me to ministry. See, our God, our faith, is asking us to know greater good is on the way. Are you willing to do that today?
greater good is on the way. We are each filled today with solutions. We pray, Father, do the impossible. We put our vision in the bowl of, of what it is we desire to have place take place, and then we say, okay, God, create the impossible. Because I don't know how to do it, but God does. The power of God is mighty within each and every one of us. Let's use it daily to call upon solutions. As faith-based people, we are being asked to walk out in our faith. Before you go out into this, into this day, put your faith on. Walk in your faith. Doubt and worry do not walk with us. Daily, daily, it's our job to feed our faith. We take our hands off the problem and we become the blessings that we desire to create. Yes? Yeah, good. So, this uh, past couple of weeks, I was in this Thrive Conference, and, and it's with mostly Christian ministers, and it's great, and, and I love it because these are all ministers of faith. And they recommended this book, which is called The Third Option, and I'm going to invite you all, if you want to understand what it's like to be black in this country, this is probably the most easy, easily read book. It is the most kind book and gentle. But it will help us to know greater what, what's taking place in a loving way. Now this Miles McPherson, I need to tell you a little bit. Miles McPherson was a San Diego charger. I don't know if you can see him, but he's pretty handsome, probably 6'3", six, 6'4", six, light-skinned black man, okay? And he is the pastor of five big churches in San Diego of over 20,000 parishioners. Can you imagine? So this guy's got to be pretty cool. And he was with the San Diego Chargers for four years, and then he got called to the ministry. And he's got stories in this book that will touch your heart and help you to change your mind, maybe. I don't know. But they're blessed stories. And it certainly, as I'm reading this book, it's softening my heart. And I hope it softens yours. And this story is called Red. Sean was at a Padres baseball game in San Diego when a little kid he'd never met before walked up and started hammering him with questions. My name's Timothy. What's your name? How old do you think I am? Guess where I live. It starts with an S. Do you go to a lot of games, he said. Sean got all the answers wrong and was getting a little irritated with Timothy, and, uh, and Timothy said, are you a Christian? And Sean now was fully engaged. Sean said, why, yes, I am. You know, we're all one big family, right? Timothy said, right as Sean turned to, uh, pro to process the conversation. Someone distracted him for a moment, but out of the corner of his, his eyes, he saw Timothy, Timothy lift his shirt over his head. What the heck is this little kid doing, he wondered. Three Thanksgivings ago, Timothy said, I got a new heart, see? And Sean looked down at, at this long, brutal scar, which then had opened his chest as Timothy chirped again. People tell me that my new heart was a gift. I think it's a gift. I think it's a gift too. It was a gift from a girl. She was black, you know. We're all here together at the game, and it doesn't matter if you have dark skin and I have light skin, right, Timothy said? And the tears in his eyes, Sean, with tears in his eyes, Sean stuttered. What an amazing gift you've got, Timothy. You're right again, 
It doesn't matter what color your skin is. And Timothy waved goodbye and said, it feels like we're part, you're part of my family. I don't mean the human family. I mean my close family. I love you. Timothy realized that the only color that mattered to him, the color that gave him life, was red, the color of his new heart in his chest. And it didn't matter to him whether that heart came from someone who looked like him or not. Timothy embodied a third option. Perspective that we should adopt. God's honoring perspective on all of the same family. His family. God's family. The third option. Yes, he's going to talk to people about, you know, coming to Jesus. But I just turn it around and I say, come to the Christ consciousness that lives within us. It's all good. It's all God. But I really like the way he talks about this and how he shares with us his stories. We need to know what that feels like. We know what our life path has felt like. Now let's learn what someone else's feels like in a loving way. Okay? So that's how we take. That's how we, what is my talk today? Mindful action. That is how we take mindful action softens our hearts, makes us open and receptive to infinite possibilities, because I think that's what God is calling us. Not to point fingers, but to lift up in optimism and in truth and love. So let's take that into prayer. Everybody breathe into that. And we recognize that there's only one power, one all-embracing, all-loving presence by whatever name. I call this God, the infinite, the divine, the beloved, infinite spirit, Mother, Father, God. There's only one. And it is the creator of all that is seen and all that is unseen. And it, it is the very life that lives and breathes within my very being. I am the beloved place where God shows up. From this place of truth and knowingness, I, Maggie, know that I speak the word of God, and it is my pleasure and pure delight to know the same truth in and every day. That right where you are, God is. That right where you are, infinite wisdom resides. Right where you are, the blessings of God reside within you. And this day, we open our hearts, our minds, our souls in a greater way to receive that truth and to allow conditions beyond situations so that we can see clearly that there is greater good taking place, not only in our lives, but the life of the world. <sighs> And we breathe into that sacred and holy place that is at the very center heart of each and every one of us. That Christed consciousness that is awakening because we have called it forth today. And we hold the picture of the vision of a world that works for everyone. And whatever that looks like to you, hold that in prayer, hold that in truth, hold that in the light of love. Say, okay, God, do your stuff. Open the doors for the vaccine. Open the doors to inspire people in a greater way to work together. Open the doors, possibilities, healing and wholeness. And bring to mind anybody in your life that is desiring a greater sense of unity and harmony to be lifted up in this moment of prayer. Know that right where they are, God is, that we are never alone. And so we call forth that infinite wisdom to awaken within our loved ones and our children and in our world. And we breathe into the solution. We breathe into the imagination. We light the lights within us to shine upon the world and everyone around us. Mm. And we bless the mystery and the miracles that we know are taking place. 
And I release my word into the ever-living, loving law of God that always says yes. Returning to and through each and every one of us, multiplied, magnified, spilling over. We are full of it. We're proud of it. And if you agree with that, please join me in saying, and so it is. Amen.